Light attacks may be made to gain surprise, avoid heavy losses, and to seize terrain for subsequent operations. Because of the adverse psychological effect on the enemy during darkness and the concealment afforded friendly forces, night attacks offer exceptional opportunities for success. Example of a rifle platoon conducting a night attack. This is the situation. First Battalion, 66th Infantry, is attacking to the north to seize Objective Tiger, high ground overlooking the city of Warsaw. Elements of the enemy's 9th Airborne Division are currently defending this high ground, 10 kilometers south of 1st Battalion's objective. The enemy possesses a nuclear capability. Because the terrain directly to the front of the enemy's present positions offers very little cover and concealment, 1st Battalion Commander, in order to avoid unnecessary casualties, has decided to attack Objective Cobra under cover of darkness, subsequent to continuing the attack to seize Objective Tiger. Company A has been assigned the mission of conducting a non-illuminated night attack to seize that portion of Cobra designated Objective Keen, which is defended by an airborne platoon. The line of departure is currently occupied by Company C, 1st Battalion, 67th Infantry. This is Captain Lawson, the commander of Company A. He has received the attack order from the battalion commander, performed the necessary troop leading procedure, and is now issuing an attack order to his platoon leaders. The battalion heavy mortar forward observer and the direct support artillery forward observer. Captain Gold is the commander of Company C, 1st Battalion, 67th Infantry. The unit Company A will pass through. The attack order contains the usual five paragraphs. However, due to the difficulty of control, night attack orders are more detailed than orders normally given for daylight attacks. In addition, the scheme of maneuver is made as simple as possible. For example, in a night attack, normally all three rifle platoons attack on line. The primary reason is, due to limited visibility, the commitment of a reserve platoon after the attack has been launched is both difficult and dangerous. Also, the employment of three platoons on line permits the placement of maximum fire on the objective, which compensates for the loss of accurate aimed fire because of reduced visibility. To facilitate control, a direction of attack is assigned to each platoon. Although supporting fires and illumination are planned, they are not used unless ordered by the company commander. This would normally occur when the company attack is discovered. At the completion of the attack order, each platoon leader continues his troop leading steps. Captain Gold remains to complete coordination with Captain Lawson. We, however, are primarily concerned with Lieutenant Cotter and the first platoon. In night attacks, reconnaissance should be made during daylight, dusk, and darkness. This will assure maximum familiarity with the terrain as it actually appears and as it will appear at night during the attack. To assist him when issuing his attack order, Lieutenant Cotter makes a sketch showing the control measures and the terrain his platoon will utilize during the attack. To compensate for slowness of movement at night, the company assembly area is closer to the line of departure than in daylight attacks. Because of this and the necessity for continuous movement, the attack position is normally designated but seldom used at night. The platoons are released from company control at the platoon release point, which is located in the vicinity of the attack position. 
This control measure is designated by the company commander. The point of departure, also designated by the company commander, is a control measure located on the line of departure over which each platoon passes. The company commander may select one point to cross in company column or release the platoons prior to crossing the LD and use several points of departure. The squads are released from platoon control at the squad release point, which is selected by the platoon leader. It is centrally located behind the platoon's portion of the PLD, probable line of deployment. It is far enough forward to permit the platoon leader maximum control over the movement of his squads, yet far enough behind the PLD to allow the squads to deploy on line with a minimum of lateral movement. Both the platoon and squad release points allow for gradual deployment of the entire company as it moves toward the PLD which is where the company commander plans to complete final deployment prior to attacking online. Usually located on the enemy side of their wire obstacles, the PLD should be as close to the enemy as possible without revealing the presence of the attacking unit. The objective for a night attack is normally smaller than for daylight attack and should be easily identified by terrain features such as a road, The limit of advance is an easily identified terrain feature beyond which the attacking unit must not advance. It is designed to prevent friendly forces from moving into the fires of supporting artillery and mortars. Having completed his daylight reconnaissance, the first platoon leader issues the attack order to his squad leaders, the 81 millimeter mortar forward observer and the team leader who will command the security patrol. In brief form, his order is as follows. Company A will attack at 0330 hours to seize Objective King. Third platoon attacks on the left, second on the right. Illumination and supporting fires will be available on call. Weapons platoon anti-tank squads will remain in the attack position initially, move forward to support the attack on order, and occupy positions in first and third platoon areas during consolidation. First platoon will attack to seize the portion of Objective King, which extends from the Tonron Point Road east, 120 meters. The platoon will advance initially under company control in platoon column formation. Order of movement, first, third, and second squad. The platoon will deploy on line with first squad on the right. Second in the center. Third on the left. The platoon will move forward from the probable line of deployment on order and assault on order from the platoon leader. Machine guns will participate in the assault. One anti-tank weapon will move with the platoon sergeant, one with the platoon leader. First squad will furnish one man to carry the platoon communication wire. It will seize the right portion of the platoon objective from the right flank of the second squad, east, 40 meters, and tie in with the left flank of second platoon. Second squad will provide flank security from the platoon release point to the squad release point and seize the center portion of the platoon objective from the right flank of third squad, east, 40 meters. squad is base squad. It will guide on the Tonron Point Road, seize the left portion of the platoon objective, and tie in with the right flank of third platoon. Weapons squad. 
One machine gun will be attached to first squad, one to third squad. They will participate in the assault and consolidate with the squads to which they are attached. When the objective has been seized, one anti-tank weapon will consolidate with first squad and one with the third. Each rifle squad will furnish two men for security patrol. Patrol leaders will report to the company commander at 0200 hours at the platoon release point. At the conclusion of the attack order, the squad leaders accomplish their troop leading steps and endeavor to make a daylight, dusk, and night reconnaissance. After that, they will issue detailed attack orders to their respective squads. This is a rehearsal of the platoon security patrol, whose mission is to secure the platoon's portion of the probable line of deployment and to guide the platoon from the platoon release point to the PLD. Prior to every night attack, a rehearsal by the attacking unit should be accomplished during daylight and darkness on terrain similar if possible to the terrain over which the attack will take place. On signal from the patrol leader, the men deploy to pre-designated positions within their respective squad portion of the PLD. During the rehearsal and prior to the actual conduct of the attack, the patrol will carefully search the area for enemy. After becoming thoroughly familiar with the area, three members of the patrol will return to the platoon release point to act as guides for their respective squads. The remaining three men will stay on the PLD under control of the patrol leader. They will provide security, assist in positioning the squads when they arrive and coordinate with the patrols of the adjacent platoon. During the platoon's day and night rehearsals, emphasis is placed on the following. First, movement from the squad release point to the probable line of deployment. During this phase, leaders ensure that the change of formation from squad column to squad line is accomplished smoothly and quietly. Secondly, movement from the PLD to the objective. Prior to giving the signal to initiate movement, the platoon leader visually checks his platoon to ensure that all of the men are standing and ready to move towards the objective. Because of reduced visibility, intervals between individuals on line will be less than during daylight attacks. Finally, the assault. When rehearsals are completed, the platoon will move back to the company assembly area, where final preparations for the attack will be made. At 0200 hours, the patrol leaders, having already received patrol orders from their platoon leaders, report to Captain Lawson for a final briefing. The company commander's briefing includes the latest enemy and friendly situation, coordination of action on the probable line of deployment, time designated for elimination of enemy outposts between squad release points and the PLD, and the time guides must return to the platoon release point. At the point of departure, the first platoon patrol is challenged by a Charlie Company rifleman. Having given the password, the patrol leader coordinates with the Charlie Company rifleman 
prior to moving to the squad release point. The patrol leader indicates the approximate time the three guides will return past this same position and receives any pertinent enemy information. The patrol continues on along the same route the platoon will use in the attack. outpost. Before returning to the patrol, the point orients himself on the location of the enemy outpost. between the point of departure and the squad release point should be, if possible, bypassed and the location reported to the platoon leader by one of the returning guides. If necessary, the outposts will be eliminated silently. re-identify the bypass route, the patrol leader points out key terrain features. Other means of identification, such as luminous tape, may also be used. When the patrol arrives at the squad release point, the men move quietly and quickly to their respective squad sectors on the probable line of deployment. Partial gaps are cut in the enemy's wire obstacles in each squad sector. After carefully searching for enemy in the vicinity of the PLD, the three guides will return to the platoon release point and await first platoon. At 0300 hours, Company A moves out of the assembly area. The company moves toward the platoon release point in column formation. Acting as advanced security is a fire team furnished by 3rd platoon. Following is the command group, 3rd platoon minus, 2nd platoon. 1st platoon minus, and the anti-tank section from the weapons platoon. Close-in flank security of one fire team each has been furnished by 1st platoon. In night operations, commanders maintain maximum control of their units by keeping them in column formation as long as possible. Throughout the entire conduct of the attack, leaders will move at or near the head of their units to ensure proper direction is maintained. As each platoon passes through the platoon release point, control of the platoon is assumed by the platoon leader. Guides meet their respective units to guide them to the probable line of deployment. At this time, information acquired by the patrol is passed on to the platoon and squad leaders.
The platoon release point is also where the platoons may tie into the company switchboard. Wire is utilized for communications between the platoon leaders and the company commander until the attack is discovered. Radio is then used. First platoon moves toward the squad release point in column formation. Squad in column. Close-in security is established on both flanks. The movement is made as quietly as possible. Radio silence will be maintained within the platoon until the attack is discovered. The platoon crosses the point of departure along the same route used by the patrol. At this time, the lead guide and two riflemen move out to re-identify the enemy outpost and the bypass route. These men will act as security and overwatch the outpost. If the platoon's movement is detected, the enemy will be eliminated. If the platoon bypasses successfully, no action will be taken until a later time. Having bypassed the enemy outpost without incident, first platoon now approaches the squad release point. The second platoon, attacking on the right flank, is suddenly taken under enemy small arms fire. Alpha one. Wait, one. Alpha six, this is Alpha one six. Second platoon has made contact with the small enemy patrol. They do not need supporting fires or illumination. Continue the attack as planned. Roger out. If one element of an attacking force is taken under enemy fire between the line of departure and the squad release point, the unit commander will not normally provide supporting fires and illumination if his other elements have not been discovered. On the other hand, if the attack has been fully discovered, the commander will call for supporting fires and illumination and the entire unit will attack, employing daylight techniques. When the platoon arrives at the squad release point, control of each rifle squad is assumed by the squad line of deployment. First squad on the right, third squad on the left, second squad in the center. After cutting the remaining wire and passing through the enemy's wire obstacles, the squads will deploy into line formation each squad leader ensuring his squad is fully deployed prior to reaching the PLD. Movement to the PLD is conducted as quietly as possible. In some situations, crawling may be necessary. When the squads arrive on the PLD, they halt and take up the prone position. This is done to ensure that all platoons assault simultaneously. The flank men of each squad coordinate to ensure no gaps exist between the assaulting elements. With the platoon fully deployed online, the platoon leader notifies the company commander who, having received word that all three platoons are deployed online, orders the attack to continue. The platoon moves forward stealthily. Every precaution is taken to ensure the troops maintain as straight a line formation as possible. Sporadic, nervous firing on the part of the enemy is no indication the attack has been discovered. 
The attacking elements must continue forward as quietly as possible. If the platoon receives effective fire, the platoon leader has the authority to initiate the attack. However, it can be delegated to the platoon sergeant. As the platoon approaches the enemy position, it is taken under effective enemy fire. With the attack discovered, the platoon leader signals for the assault. When a night assault is launched, it must be conducted violently and aggressively. Troops shout and create as much noise and confusion as possible. A great volume of firepower is vital to the success of the assault. At this time, fire superiority must be established and maintained. To prevent excessive casualties and to capitalize on the element of surprise, the assaulting troops move as rapidly as possible toward the enemy position. Tracers are used to increase the accuracy of fire and to demoralize the enemy. Pre-planned indirect fires are employed to seal off the objective to destroy any retreating enemy and to prevent enemy reinforcements. In addition, illumination is utilized to light up the objective area. enemy resistance, the rapid assault continues. To facilitate control, the assault line must be maintained. Grenade launchers are used to knock out key enemy positions. Rapidly and aggressively, the assaulting troops close with the enemy. When an enemy position is overrun, it must be cleared as quickly as possible. Prisoners should be searched immediately, then turned over to the platoon leader for disposition. Every precaution must be taken to ensure no live enemy soldier has been bypassed on the objective. The possibility of such an occurrence is greater at night than by day. Troops cross over the objective to place fire on any withdrawing enemy and to prepare against a counterattack. With the objective secured, the work of consolidation and reorganization begins. Security is posted, but not beyond the limit of advance. Ammunition is redistributed. Sectors of fire are assigned. Automatic weapons are given principal directions of fire. Key personnel are redesignated. Flank positions are set up on previously designated terrain features and contact is established with the adjacent platoons. Prisoners and casualties are evacuated. Having made a rapid estimate of the situation, the platoon leader now reports to the company commander the accomplishment of his mission. When an infantry unit is committed to a night attack mission, specific techniques and measures must be carried out. Prior to the attack, Reconnaissance by key leaders should be made during daylight, dusk, and darkness. Attack orders will be longer and more detailed, 
due to added control measures and special instruction. Rehearsals should be accomplished during daylight and darkness, with emphasis placed on movement from the squad release point to the probable line of deployment. Movement from the probable line of deployment to the objective and the assault. These actions, combined with secrecy, surprise, control, and initiative will result in success for the rifle platoon in night attack.